Okay, so this is going to be the last video for this course. Or um, let me just say the theoretical one. We're going to move on to the lab in the next video. We want to talk about the classification setting. So in the classification uh, setting, how do we uh, assess um, model accuracy when we're talking about classification, right? So in, in the previous video, we talked about, we used linear regression as a simple example, right? And we talked about the test, MSc training, MSc and stuff. What about classification? We do not have that. In classification, because um, what, I, what happens in classification is what we are actually predicting are classes. So which means our YIs, they are qualitative, they are not quantitative. So it, it really does not make sense for us to measure the distance between the actual eye and the predicted eye. We cannot measure the distance like we did previously because the distance we measured previously we, in the regression setting we said y i minus y predicted, right? That's what we said. But here we, we're not going to use this. This can, we cannot apply because we're talking about qualitative, qualitative variables. We're talking about classes distinct classes like that, right? Hopefully distinct anyway. Uh, so, what we need to know is many concepts like bias, variance, trade-off, they also apply to this classification setting. That's why we had to emphasize it in the previous videos, right? They also apply to classification setting with only a few changes because these YIs are no longer numerical. So, suppose we seek to estimate F. Still, we want to estimate F that will give us a way of putting putting these observations into different classes. That is the case now. Previously, it was what is the in person's income, right? What is the person's income that we wanted to predict? But in this case, in classification, we have our x's or our variables or observations, and we want to put them into different classes. The same is uh, just as a simple example. We can look at the person's age. Um, maybe it's the shopping habits shopping habits look at um their bank balance look at their bank balance their point of sale or post swipes etc right and then one when we look at that we put we put these x's this x1 x2 x3 x4 we put them inside some function f and it's going to tell us is the person a, a big spender is the person a big spender or is the person um is the person a low spender this is these are the two decisions that we need to make right from our training data or, and then apply it to someone we do not know like our test data or whatever it is right so it's different from our previous one because our previous one was saying okay let's estimate our y which is going to be our income i'm trying to emphasize the difference between regression and classification in classification we are classifying into uh into classes or groups like this right and so our training observations we are going to have this like training observations that are relevant here let's say x1 a set of x's we're going to have a set of x's like maybe age shopping habits bank balance post wipes cool and whether the person is a big spender or not a big spender same for x2 for a person number two for person number two we're going to have the same x's here and whether they are big spender or they are what they are a low spender like that all the way up to the last observation that we have person number n so person number n we have their their age shopping habits bank balance post wipes and then the yn associated with that big spend or uh, or what or low spend so this is this is our training data that's going to be our training data one we are going to use to estimate our f right and we know that our y's our y's are qualitative they are classes cool so to quantify the accuracy of our estimate f what okay so accuracy of f what is the accuracy of f yeah it, it is it is not the training msc like previously it is called the training error rate we are just going to call it the training error rate so to calculate our training error rate 
what we need to do is we need to calculate the proportion of mistakes that are made so proportion that's how we calculate the error rate proportion of mistakes that are made um, if we apply if you apply our our estimate f to the training observations so this is basically saying when when we have our f right when we have our f how many mistakes are we going to make what are the mistakes when it comes to classifying the mistakes are putting the person in the wrong group that's just it that's just it so how many mistakes are we, are we going to make how many people are we going to put in the wrong group then we know how accurately we are doing. If there is no one, if there is no one we have mistakenly put in the wrong group, then our accuracy is one hundred percent. You you get what I mean? But if there are many people we have put into wrong groups, it means our F is not accurately doing a good job at at, at predicting whether someone is a big spender or a low spender, for example, right? And mathematically writing that this. Error rate is given by 1 over n, the proportion, because the proportion, i equal to 1, n, and then this, uh, what is it? this indicator variable, just going to say, we'll tell you what it means, um, that indicator variable, cool, so let's, let's uh, as always, let's dig deep into what, the, what, what this means, what this basically means, this part here is called, uh, it's, it's an indicator variable, and it is equal to number like number one it is equal to one if if and only if my yi the actual is not equal to what do i mean the actual is not equal this basically means this part here it will be equal to one if the actual group of the person is not equal to the one that i've predicted i put a one there then the, it is equal to zero if and only if the actual group of the person is equal to the predicted group or the predicted class, right? So what that basically means is we're going to say, let's say, let's say we have, we have five people, we have five people. And for the first person, so we're going to say one over five, because that is our n, our n is five. And then this summation is just basically saying this indicator variable is going to put a one for each person that doesn't, that is, that has been incorrectly classified and it's going to put a zero for the for the people that have been correctly classified let's say for person number one we put them in the wrong class it's going to put a one because it's summation it's saying sum up for everyone it's going to be plus what about the next person let's decide did we classify the next person correctly or not yes we classified them correctly so it's going to be say plus zero the next person did the third person did we classify them correctly there actual group is it equal to what we predicted yes okay cool we put a zero plus for the fourth person did we classify the fourth person correctly oh no the the one that we said the pred the predicted class that we gave them is not equal to the one that that they actually in so we put a one then for the last person what what, what, what was the result ah the result was a one because we put them in a different class than the one that actually are and we know the actual one because we are we're talking about training data and in training data we have the actual one that's the one that we use to to create our f right and then we'll be like okay so how did our f perform this is one plus zero plus zero plus one plus one that is three over five so that is our error so three-fifths error this is the, this means 60 percent inaccurate mm. That is a very high high um, inaccuracy rate, I would say, right? It's very high. So we now will adjust our F. We'll adjust our F to see if it will affect this percentage here. Will, will it classify people better? That's basically what we're doing in the classification setting, right? And as always, we are interested in the test error rate. So that is the training error rate. Once, once we, we have done the training error rate and stuff like that, we have adjusted for the F and we think the training error rate is now, is now low enough. What we are really interested in is the test error rate. We are not really interested in the um, training error rate. 
when we put things into production. In production, we're interested in the test error rate. So that test error rate, uh, we will then need to get the test error rate. And as I said before, there are many methods of calculating this test error rate. If we do not have a test, a testing, uh, if we don't have it, if we don't have the test data, without the test data, there are many methods like cross validation that we can use there, right? So let's discuss a very important, um, very important. Let's see. Uh, should I do it in this video? No. Let me let me do it in the next video because we are going to discuss KNN. So although I said this is the last video, let me make the the uh, next video the last one where we talk about a classification example like KNN.